Hi, Zadie. Hi, good afternoon. How are you doing? I'm doing well, thank you. Good. I joined and was the only one and he was recording and we're like, oh, okay, <laughs> let me get off the camera. <laughs> right, yeah. Guess we'll wait for the others to show up here. I'm working on sharing my screen while we wait for the others. So I look like I'm doing something. That's what I'm doing. Yeah, that's a great idea. Every little, every um, platform has their own thing. And mm -hmm. when you switch from one to the other, it's like, oh, where, where are things? How do I share? <laughs> Yes. Can you see it okay? Yes. Okay. Uh, yeah, I didn't upload it yet. Um, I started a pull request to um, add it to our notes, but uh, going back and forth a little bit with John, first there was some installation issues, and then currently, I guess, I didn't know this, but there's an issue with the OKC data that's in this chapter. Um, mm. If you read about it, it says they deprecated it due to some ethical issues. So uh, I might replace that, but I haven't done that yet. So Starting to wonder if it's just going to be us. <laughs> Do you think we should go ahead and start, Zadie? Um, it's five after. <laughs> um, sure. I they they will post the recording anyway. So, right. Yeah, not sure where everybody else is today. 
Hopefully they'll join late. Um, okay, so we didn't meet last week. Uh, last week was supposed to be chapter two. Um, so I told our organizer uh, that we'd um, talk about chapter two if there were any questions or anything. Did you get Torch installed okay? Um, I have had no problems with it. Yeah, okay. Are you using a GPU as well or just CPU? No, just CPU. My yeah, okay. Yeah, all the examples should be fine on CPU. I, I do have access to a GPU, so it did um, require a little bit more work to get that um, going, but uh, I got it. So Okay, um, so yeah, I didn't have anything else to talk about for Chapter 2. I was just going to see if anybody got stuck or anything, so I think we can move on to Chapter 3. Okay, I am just going to walk through my notes, which I'm sharing. If you want to jump in, you have like comments, questions or anything. Did you get a chance to read chapter three? I went through it briefly once a couple of weeks. <laughs> okay, yeah, it might be a little rusty then. Yes. Yeah, just jump in uh, if you want me to slow down or anything. Um, yeah, so at the end of the chapter, they said this is the longest chapter and the least applied, but it's um, really foundational stuff, so. Right. Okay. So, um, yeah, learning objectives is all about tensors. Uh, so how to create, and modify them, access parts of the tensors and apply operations to them. Okay. So just starting about talking about what are tensors. Um, so the book said tensors are just multidimensional arrays optimized for fast computation. Uh, so if you're familiar with, um, our array objects, it kind of has that construct. So the libraries that we need for this chapter are below Torch, obviously. We use a little bit of Tidyverse, and then also this model data package. Um, somebody posted in the channel that you have to go back to an older version of this package to get the OKC data, um, and the link is there. So kind of annoying. You have to download it and install that. Um, like I was mentioning earlier, I'm probably going to go back and change this data set for two reasons. One, it's annoying to install, and two, um, it was brought up that there's some issues with this data um, ethics or whatever. I'm not exactly sure the details, but um, yeah, there's probably another data set we could use. Okay, so we'll start off by creating a tensor. Um, we use this function torch underscore tensor. Here we're passing it uh, to. So it'll store the number two, and then we can look at its shape. Um, its shape is just one dimensional of length one. And the parameters of this function, uh, the data, so in this example, we passed it to the um, type, which we're just using the defaults currently, the device, whether or not you're going to use the CPU or the GPU, and then a couple other parameters, which we haven't um, talked about yet. Okay, so we can look at the attributes of the tensor. Um, so like I mentioned, the type, uh, in this case, it's a float. And uh, the device, uh, it's currently stored on the CPU as opposed to the GPU. And its shape, like we saw earlier, is just one. And then a lot of times in R, you can use summary um, on objects. So I was just kind of curious to see what that would do. I didn't think it was super useful. Uh, so it just told me that the length is one. And then it gave me these classes in this mode. Okay, and then if we've already created a tensor, for example, we created this uh, T1 tensor, we can change its attributes. Uh, so in this example, we're changing from float to integer using torch underscore int. And you can see now the D type is torch int. Or if we wanna utilize the GPU, um, we set device equals CUDA. Okay. So that's a brief introduction to tensors. I'll jump into um, section 3.1, creating tensors. So uh, the default, when you create a tensor, the book said it's a um, long integer type and uh, also is stored on the CPU device. If you want it on the GPU, you have to explicitly tell it. Uh, so I tested this. So here I'm passing torch tensor uh, one through two, and we see it's a long type. 
just as the base of the defaults would be. But interestingly, if you pass in a vector of one and two using the um, C function, uh, it's actually a float. So I don't, I'm not really sure of the reason for that. Um, my guess is if you look at the class of um, uh, C one, two, it's numeric versus one colon two, it's integer. So I'm not sure if that's where the difference comes in. Okay, and then this example, we're passing it uh, the sequence from one to five, and we're setting the uh, data type to float and the device equal to CUDA, which you can see below. Okay, so those were my one dimensional tensors. So we'll move on to two dimensional tensors. Uh, we can pass it a matrix. So here, uh, a three by three matrix. And you can see we get a three by three tensor and the data type is long. The shape is three by three. Okay, then if we'd like to create a tensor of higher dimensions, we can use uh, our array object. So here uh, we pass in the sequence one to 24 and it's a three dimensional tensor. So um, the shape is four by three by two. And you can see the result, the four, four by three by two. And that's type long. Okay, and then there's some handy shortcut uh, functions if you need something specific. So um, the first one, torch underscore rand n, draws from a, a standard normal distribution. And uh, 3, 3 gives you a 3 by 3. Okay, uh, if you drop the end and just use torch underscore rand, that's a three by three drawn from uh, the uniform distribution on zero one. Um, torch zeros gives you um, a, a tensor with uh, zeros in it, here are two by two. And similarly, uh, ones, torch underscore ones gives, in this case, a three by three tensor of ones. Um, I have a, Yes. A, a small question. Yes. Um, Hi. <laughs> Glad you joined. <laughs> so, sorry. Yeah. Uh, I was rushing to join. Sorry for me. Yeah. So I was thinking uh, because I see the functions here we have for our, um, they are more or less like looking like a Python or PyTorch. So do they have relation? Do they translate them into similar? Because the way I think also in Python, in PyTorch to do that is the same. So I was just wondering like, do they map the same similar function name and you know the way they are in python or yeah i was just wondering <laughs> um yeah i so i believe it is a, a port of pytorch meaning that uh -huh. yeah, there's gonna be a lot of similarities with pytorch which um yeah I, I guess a good thing is then you might be able to easier read pytorch yeah exactly than... exactly okay yeah. did you have some specific functions you're wondering about no, um, I just like uh, because I had a bit a uh, uh, Python before, so I was see like oh the, they are all most the same, you know. So I think that now you just see like it's you know port of the Python, so maybe it is at the back round at the back end that is implementing using R and other stuff. Yeah. Um. So right, the R Torch library is built on top of C, but I think um the library is really influenced a lot by PyTorch because it's a okay. port. So they really were looking at the PyTorch code a lot, I believe. It's my understanding. Yeah. Right. Okay. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I felt like a few things were um it kind of had a Python style. <laughs> yeah. By the way, also. Is it by default here? For example, here you can see touch I, we can see like is C few plot type. So by default, is this plot the you know the data type? Um uh what I'm not sure yeah. here, for example, we can see three, you just it's not float. I'm not sure like three is float number, maybe it's int. Do, do we have int? Um or what's yeah, I'm, I'm looking up to see. So the right, these are all floats. Uh obviously rand random numbers are floats. Um, this one was a int. I don't know. The book said the default was int, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure why. Um, like the zeros and the ones are giving floats. 
So if the book, for example, say the default is int, so maybe we can see int, right? Uh, because we didn't specify the data type for creating the torch. So for example, maybe here, when we say we want to create um tensor, which is float or whatsoever, we need to provide that argument so that we are creating that data type. But if by default is int, we should be able to see in. What do you think? Yeah, well, it's kind of strange because like this example up here, um, if I pass in the sequence one to two, mm -hmm. the type is long. But if I pass in this oh, one, yeah. here, one two, then the type is float. <laughs> so I'm not yeah, sure. It's great. I think probably if you want one or the other, you should just specify it just to be safe. Right, right. Yeah, this is something like, yeah, okay. Maybe we can check out that. Thanks for um, at, um, attempting the questions. Thank you. Sure. No, yeah. Please jump in whenever you have something. Otherwise, I'll just rush through this. <laughs> okay. So let's see where we're at. We covered rand n, rand zeros, ones, which seem to be all type float. And then the i is the identity matrix here, three by three. Again, float. And then we can create diagonal matrices. Okay, and then I have a link here. It's the full list um, of tensor creation utilities. And I'll post these notes um, in our uh, group notes. Eventually, I'm working on the pull request right now. I had a few issues. Okay, so quite okay. cool. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, tensors from data sets. Um, so, right, so this is the OKC data, OKCupid um, from the model data library. So a couple things with this, I am not sure um, if you're on the call early or not, but um, one is that we have to install an older version of this because they got rid of the OKC data in this package. So it's a little annoying. And the other thing is that apparently there's some ethical concerns with this data. Um, if you read about the package, it, it talks about that references a paper. So anyway, I'm not showing any of the data here. Um, I will probably go and try to look for a different data set but um, for now we'll use it. So if you're able to load it, uh, I'm filtering by age greater than 150 just to see what the um, what the columns are, their types without printing the data. Maybe there's a better way to do that, but. Okay, so we have age, which is integer, diet, which is character, height, which is integer, location is a character, feature, date is a date, and class is a factor. Maybe using column name? just to see the yeah you could see the column names that way but i didn't get the types when i did that uh what what about glimpse glimpse yeah glimpse shows the data and i was trying to avoid showing data uh-huh <laughs> so, what about summary oh, oh that might work <laughs> possibly right. yeah okay Anyway, yeah, before I do the pull request, I might change the data, or maybe I'll just do it. Yeah, do the summary. Okay, cool. So, Amanda, um, yeah. I I seem to have a different version of the book than you are looking oh, at. Really? Oh, really? Um, and they are, I don't know why, <laughs> and they're looking at uh, the Johnson & Johnson data set. Um, so, I'm not sure, you know, what you know, the I discrepancy. Think, right, I saw that set somewhere. Were there two examples? Do you have the hardback or do you have, are you looking online? I'm looking online. Oh, okay. I have the hard, or it's okay. a soft, soft cover book, but hard copy. Um, I think I saw that same data set that you were saying. So you didn't see the OKC data at all? Oh, no. okay. Maybe they took it out then. Maybe, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Thank you. All right. Anyway, so, um, they were saying that uh, Torch prefers um, numeric input. So we have to change character features and factor um, features. And also date, you can feed into Torch um, to create a tensor. It'll uh, create um, numeric values, which is fine. Um, in this setup, I was uh, feeding using dplyr uh, OKC and to mutate into as matrix. And um, as matrix change everything to string because of the date field. So I just changed the date to numeric here in this mutate function. So uh, for our character features, we can apply uh, the factor function to uh, transform it to a factor and then as numeric to get um, integers. And then um, similar with location, which was originally a character uh, feature. 
class was already a factor. Um, so I just changed that to numeric and then date to numeric. So as matrix and then created a tensor. And you can see it's shaped there. Okay, um, the book had a comment about this data set. Uh, so there's a little bit of information loss here. Um, one of the features was location. And uh, for example, they had Los Angeles and South Los Angeles. So if you change that to a factor, then you're losing sort of locational information. So maybe you might want to use a lat long instead, but it really depends on your application. And then also this data contains NAs, um, and you'll want to take care of that too before training a neural network, but that was going to be covered later in the book. Okay, any other comments, questions on the section, creating tensors? No, we good. Um, I think maybe as they, she said, um, the books, um, you know, is not currently using the data. <laughs> so... Uh... Yeah, so I think because like there is a lot of full requests maybe to update something, it's better to use the um, online book so that uh, all the changes are reflected um, immediately. Using the hard book, maybe one may use the uh, um, old version of the stuff. Yeah, yeah, okay. I'll keep that in mind if I present again. I do like reading hard copies. <laughs> yeah, a lot of me too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, okay, cool. All right. Okay, so moving on to operations on tensors. Um, so here we're creating uh, two tensors, T1 and T2, uh, each having shape two. So we can add these two uh, using this function torch underscore add. And in this case, neither T1 or T2 is modified. And the result is uh, four, six, a tensor containing four and six. Okay, alternatively, uh, T1 has a function called add. So in this case, T2 is added to T1. Again, T1 is not modified. Uh, the result is a tensor with uh, data four and six having shape two. Um, I didn't print out T1, but you could verify that yourself. T1 would still be the original data of uh, one, two. So if you do want to modify um, this, you can use this add underscore function. So T1, using that function T2, we add T1 and T2 together, we get the same result. And then if you then look at T1, it's four, six. So it's been updated. So in general, uh, underscore appended to the operation indicates modification in place. And another comment was that torch does not distinguish between row and column vectors. So if you have a one by n and an n by one, you can sum those. And then some other examples that were covered in the book, um, which I didn't put them all here in the notes, but um, torch underscore t, uh, the dot product, the matrix multi multiplication, multiply, um, oh, t is transpose. And then I have a link to the list there for um, all the mathematical operations on tensors. Okay, so below is an example of the dot product. Um, we're taking uh, T1, T2, dotting them together to get 32. Okay, and then we have some summary operations. So here, M is a matrix uh, created using the outer product, and T is a tensor, uh, Again, using uh, an outer product, but here we use the um, function torch underscore outer, and we feed it two tensors. So if we want to get the row sums of M, our matrix, we uh, can use the apply function. Um, the function we're applying is the sum, and we're applying that to, I think the parameter in the apply function is called index. So index equals one. So we get these three numbers. Uh, if we want to get the row sums for the tensor, it's slightly different. Uh, here we indicate dimension equals two and to get the same numbers. So it's a little confusing because apply, you specify index equals one. Um, for the tensor, you say dimension equals two. It's because the setup is slightly different. So we say in R, we group by row 
So dimension one for row summaries and by columns, which is dimension two for column summaries. Alternatively in Torch, we collapse the columns, dimension two to get row summaries and, um, and rows dimension one to get column summaries. So I think that's probably something I'll have to look up whenever I need to do it. Uh, I can see how that'd be easy to forget. Okay, the book also had a time series example. So in this example, two features are collected three times for four individuals. So here dimension one runs over individuals, dimension two runs over points in time, and dimension three runs over features. So we define that here, uh, torch, we're gonna um, draw random, uh, right, normally distributed random numbers and the shape of our tensor is four by three by two. So you can see that here, I have a four by three by two tensor. Okay, so then to obtain averages of features independent of subject, which is dimension one and time dimension two, those are the two dimensions that I'm collapsing over. I specify dim equals, um, and then a vector with one, two. Uh, I use the function mean. And you can see I have the means for each of the features. Okay, that's the end of operations on tensors. Any comments, questions? Good. Yeah, that will take uh, some time to adjust between what's the dimension here, <laughs> one and two. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I, um, yeah, it's a little, it's, it takes some getting used to. There's the shape and there's dim the dimension. I thought it was helpful. I actually have the book up. Um, I thought this picture was, can you see that or did I only share one tab? No, we cannot. You can't see it. Okay. Um, let me share the link in the Zoom. Just so that I These things all get <laughs> I shared the link in chat. Sorry, I should have shared my whole window. Um, okay. But, oh, it probably doesn't link to the, the picture. Sorry, in section 3.2.1, um, okay. tensor strong values, there's a picture uh, an X with the X, Y, Z yes. axis. So yeah, so this it is an example of a three-dimensional tensor and the shape is, um, I always forget which one comes first. I think Z comes first, two by four by three. So it's the length in each of those directions. Yeah, it's three it's, dimensional it says, because there's an X and a Y and a Z. It's say four by three by two. Say that again. It says four oh. by three by two. Four by three by two. Gotcha, okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's confusing which one comes first, X, Y, or Z. Okay. So here, um, which one is four? X. X. In the picture, yeah. X. Yeah, and Y is three. But, okay, um, I'm a little bit confused. How do we know, how do we say that it's four? X is four. Because of the squares, uh, you can see the, the four squares in the X dimension. Okay, we can see four squares in X dimension. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, but the, the line is up to the four. Um, the box is bounding the up to four in X. If it's helpful, I can um, reshare my screen. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Sorry, uh, maybe I'm lost. <laughs> you want me to reshare re the screen to... Yes, I can share yes, my whole window. Yes, okay. Yes. Can you share. It's good to get understanding of this before we. Okay. <laughs> yes. Yeah, this is important. It's kind of foundational. Yeah. Oops. Okay. You probably see yourself now. <laughs> yes. Okay. Do you see the picture now? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. So, in the X direction, if you just look at the box, the shaded region, Oh, There's four shaded squares. Oh, I see. Yeah. Okay. This is then, four. Right. Yep. And the Y is, is three. Oh, and Z okay. it's kind of hard to tell. So which is two? I'm assuming Z, but there's no squares there to tell you. 
<laughs> so, um, it might say in the text below. The array, on the other hand, splits them up by Z, resulting in two big four by three slices that go up and to the right. Yeah. So I think the text is indicating that Z is two. Mm. OK. Yeah, now I understand x is 4. I understand y is 3. But mm -hmm. um, um, the figure from the figure is not indicative. Z is 2 better. Yeah, I get it. Yeah, they could probably label the axes there to show mm -hmm. that better. OK, cool. Good. Thanks. OK. OK, any other comments or questions about operations on tensors? Good. Not, I'll move move on to accessing parts of tensors. So this is all about uh, indexing and slicing the tensors. So um, torch is one based, uh, which is nice if you're coming from R. So okay, we'll look at this example. We'll create this tensor T. Um, we'll feed it a matrix. It's a three by three. You can see it here. And then uh, just like if you're working with matrices in R, if you want the first row, you just type one comma and then space to say all columns. So we get that first row, one, two, three. And then a little bit different than R, um, there's an extra parameter that you can use if you'd like. So again, I'm still, um, I'm still getting the first row, but drop equals false means that um, the dimensionality is preserved. So above, um, when I grabbed the first row, my new shape was three. So it's like a vector um, that's of like three, one dimensional. But now, uh, since I set drop equals false, the shape is one by three. Right. Okay, um, also another slicing example. So here I have a, um, okay, torch ran. So I'm drawing random numbers from the uniform distribution and the shape is three by three by three. So I didn't print that out, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna slice um, two uh, from the first dimension, uh, another two and another two. So if it's continuous, you can just use that colon. Uh, but if you just want the one and third, you use that C function. So as a result, I have a two by two by two tensor. Okay, so um, they talked about that, how it's similar to R, uh, but then there's some other functionality that's a little bit different than R. So in this case, uh, accessing the last element. So uh, we define a tensor here, T. Uh, it's a two by two with integers one to four. And uh, if I specify T minus one, minus one, so again, T is a tensor, then I get that last element. And I did look to see how this works in R too, so we'll cover that, but um, Let's see. Also, if I specify that just not a matrix, but just a one dimensional tensor with the numbers one to four, and I say T negative one, then again, it gives me that last element, which is four. Okay, so let's compare that to how R works, just as a, uh, to remember. So um, here I'm specifying M, it's a matrix, it's a two by two. And um, if I say m negative one negative one, I actually do get that last element uh, similar to what we did with the tensor. However, if I'm working with vectors, so now m below is uh, the sequence one to four, so there's four numbers. If I say m negative one, that drops the first element, so it removes the first element. So then I'm left with just two, three, four. So this is an example of where um, uh, R is a little bit different than Torch. Okay, uh, we can also slice using a step pattern. 
So again, I'm defining T uh, as a tensor. It is a um, two by 10, so 10 columns. And you can see it there. Okay, and now I'm using this, um, uh, I'm saying one colon eight colon two. So that's saying uh, grab everything columns one through eight, but only every other one. So we look at the result here. So we get the first column, the third column, the fifth column, and the seventh column. And then if you don't want to specify every dimension, um, you can use these dot dots. It designates all dimensions not explicitly referenced. So to look at this example, we'll create some random numbers from the normal distribution. It's a two by two by two, which you can see here. And um, this T two, and I specify two comma dot dot. I'm selecting the second element of the first dimension. So you can see that's um, the same as what was up here, the second element of the first dimension. Okay, that's all I had for um, slicing and indexing. Any comments on that? No. Good, okay. Okay, we'll move on to reshaping. So uh, in this chapter, we covered view and reshape functions. So they're slightly different. View is a zero copy reshape. Um, so meaning we don't um, copy the data, but we change its metadata. But this can possibly fail if the zero copy reshape isn't possible. And then reshape uh, uses zero copy reshape, um, you know, by changing the metadata if it's possible. And if it's not possible, then I'll make a copy. So let's look at some examples. Uh, here we have a tensor. Um, it's a three by five. Okay. And then um, we can look at its stride. So here stride means it's the jump necessary to go from one element to the next in, in a dimension. So for example, here, the stride is five one. That means we need to jump five, um, I don't know, elements, five elements to go to the next row. And then we need to jump one element to go to the next column. And that's the metadata that tensor, ten, I'm sorry, not TensorFlow. Um, uh, torch uses in the background to keep track of what our tensor looks like. Okay, so uh, we'd like to change the shape of T and we can do that using this view function. So uh, earlier we saw that this is a three by five. So now we'd like to make it a five by three. So I just specify that in view and you can see here it's now a five by three. And now if we look at the stride, now it's different. It's three by one. So I need to move three elements to get to the next row and one element to get to the next column. But if we look at the memory location um, of those two, T and T2, you can see that they're the same, meaning the underlying data, it's pointing it to the same location. It's just the metadata that changed. Okay, so let's consider view versus reshape. Um, so there's some issues where a view might fail and it seems to be when um, we're changing the stride uh, using two operations that are done in sequence. Um, so this example below, if you tried running that, uh, it would fail. So uh, starting with T, we're taking its transpose and then um, applying the view function and that doesn't work. But we can use reshape T transpose and then reshape that and then that works and you can see the result here. Um, so my question is, um, maybe if we go maybe further in the chapters, like when do you, when do we need to use view? When do we need to use reshape? Maybe. Yeah, that's a great question. We should write down questions that we want to keep track of that might be <laughs> yeah. later in the book. Yeah. 
Yeah, I would say, reshape seems really convenient, but maybe you're trying to be really careful about your memory consumption or something. I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. That's my guess. Right. Okay. Okay, so we can look at the memory locations now. Um, so T uh, is pointing to this location. And then if we look at T3, so recall T3 was created with the um, reshape function and now it's at a different location. So it didn't just change the metadata, it changed the, um, it had to do a copy. And the book talks about two additional functions that are zero copy operations. So squeeze and unsqueeze. This is kind of, um, again, changing the dimension. Uh, it's either removing or adding singleton dimensions. So uh, let's see what that means here by looking at an example. So T is a um, tensor of shape three. Okay, you can see it there, random numbers. And the um, shape is currently three. So if we unsqueeze it, then the shape will be one, three. So I didn't add this example, but then if we applied squeeze to T2, then we should be back at a shape of three. And again, let's look at the location. Uh, so it said this was a zero copy. So that's right, we see that both T and T2 uh, after we do the un unsqueeze, um, they're in the, the pointer points to the same location. Okay, any comments on that section? No, good. Okay, uh, one more broadcasting. We'll move on to that. Okay, um, so this is kind of different. Uh, if you're not used to tensors, something to wrap your head around. Um, so we like to add two tensors of shape three by seven by one and one by five. <clears throat> so if these were matrices, obviously you couldn't do that. But ten, uh, I see, keep wanting to say TensorFlow. <laughs> um, Torch uh, works differently. So here um, T1 has shape three by seven by one and T2 has shape one by five. It turns out we can add these. So what happens is broadcasting is done. So um, if you think about maybe you want to add a vector to a ma uh, matrix, you would broadcast by, um, you know, if, the, if there's the same number of columns, then you would copy that vector to um, replicate uh, to get the same number of rows. I don't know. That may be confusing, but in this example, uh, we broadcast from right to left. So um, T2, the last dimension there was 5, and uh, we broadcast... Uh, the elements in the third dimension of T1. Um, and so then now we have a dimension of five. And then we do a similar thing for T2, uh, we broadcast. So we have three by seven by five and a seven by five. And then we do this virtual expansion. So I think that would, uh, you know, we just talked about squeeze and unsqueeze. So think about unsqueezing. So we add the singleton dimension and then you can broadcast again to get a three by seven by five. So uh, we can add those, and you can see here an example. So in this example, T1, uh, I'm using torch ones, so it's a three by seven by one. And T2, uh, I'm using torch zeros, it's a one by five. And if I try adding T1 to T2, then I get a, like just like in our example, I get a three by seven by five. Let's see, see the shape there, a three by seven by five of all ones. Yeah. So I'm just thinking while we're doing this, I hope maybe in the next subsequent chapters, we'll just be looking at the applications of all these maybe broadcasting. So we are getting, you know, the foundation right now, right? So some questions may not be answered. Maybe we'll see them practically. in. Right. Subsequent. Yeah, I'm guessing that'll happen. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it said at the end of the chapter that this was the least applied chapter, so. Yeah, okay. Okay, so the following will not work. Um, if you try adding, so the first vector T1 is three by seven by one, and the second vector is six by five. Can you see why that doesn't work? Um, um, so maybe because we have seven and five different? Almost. 
Um, so the five and the one are okay. That's the last. So you have to do it. You have to line everything up to the right. So it's the seven and the six that are the issue. Uh, okay. So if you look up with this example, um, it's always right to left. So notice how I kind of like wrote that, kind of lined up the dimensions right to left. Mm -hmm. So if there's a one, that's okay. Um, but any other numbers, if they mismatch, then that's a problem. Uh -huh. Okay. Is it a so, mismatch or could it be like a factor? Like if That's a great question. Yeah, like if we had, um, I don't know, 12 up here instead of 7, could you add those two together? Mm -hmm. Maybe 12 will work, I think, right? Possibly. Yeah, we. I think somebody should try that. <laughs> Oops, uh-oh. I just moved to the next thing. Um, yeah. So that's all I had for Chapter 3. Are there any other comments, questions? Um or chapter two as well, if you want to talk about installation. Uh, okay, so I think um, that's good. Thank you for presenting. Um, yeah. Sure, I will turn off my sharing. Yep, okay. All right, so. So uh, do we want to talk about next week too? Yes, yeah, so next week we're gonna have the auto grad, right? Um, uh, yeah. And I, I may or may not be here. I have family in town. I'm hoping to ah. be here, but <laughs> okay. um, yep. Right. So um, maybe next week, I'm not sure if uh, we're going to be only two or whatever. I don't know. So um, right now, nobody pick up the ch next autograd chapter. Um, so maybe I can volunteer to take the autograd chapter and um. I don't know if we come here and we have at least three people we can go ahead but maybe if we are two we can just uh you know say we can meet week after okay yeah as soon as i know i'll try to post something in the channel about whether or not i'll be able to make it okay okay yeah okay thank you very much for joining and uh, thank you uh, amanda for presentation uh cool so uh so we see you next week, I guess. Okay, bye-bye. So, I think uh, maybe...